Hey everyone, welcome to another sensory percussion tutorial. Today we are talking about the updated 2022 sensory percussion plugin template for Live 11. I am using some features that are only available in Suite. Uh, the majority of students that I've worked with have Suite, so I felt like it was okay to incorporate that. If you don't have Suite, that's totally fine. I think it's only the Max for Life stuff that you won't be able to use. I did make a tutorial that was almost exactly the same thing in 2020, but the plugin version of Sensory Percussion was pretty fresh, and we have a new version of Live. So there are updates of things that I've refined, things that I think are a better workflow now. So if you have watched the 2020 version, I think this will still be worth watching just to get those updates. So the goal of this template is to make it as easy and fast as possible to get up and running with the sensory percussion plugin. This is, template is actually kind of overkill. There's a lot of stuff in here. And the general idea behind this is that you could throw this into your session and then reduce, subtract stuff that you're not planning on using. For instance, I have a whole group of individual audio outputs from the different channels and sensory percussion. If you're not planning on recording stems from your, you should totally just delete this. Make your life easier and simpler, have less to work with. The very first thing to mention, which might be confusing if you're not familiar with a DAW workflow or plugins, is that this is the sensory percussion plugin. It is hosted within Live. This is not the same as the sensory percussion standalone. So if you're using Ableton Live and this template, you do not need to use the standalone at all. You can open Live and then sensory percussion as a plugin will be hosted inside of Live already. The very next thing to address is how to get audio from your sensors into sensory percussion because there's no longer an IO button up here. And that's okay because we can take care of that in Live. That's what this group is for. These are audio tracks that receive audio from the sensors. Whatever channels on your interface they're plugged into are set up here. You want to set the monitoring to auto or in. I stick with auto most of the time. And then, very important, the output needs to go into the plugin. And then you can specify what drum channel that sensor is supposed to be on. Going back to what I said earlier about getting rid of stuff you don't need, Today, I only have two sensors set up, so I'm going to get rid of this. But I had four there in case you have the full setup. It's already there, ready to go, and it's pretty easy to just delete what you don't need like I just did. So you can see my kick is coming in there, my snare is coming in there, and if I open the plugin, hooray, you can see these are showing up here just like with the standalone version. So now that we have audio going into the plugin, let's look at this plugin track. You don't have to have any clips here. I like to use these dummy clips to switch kits. A really cool thing that I didn't know until fairly recently is that you can switch kits by just utilizing this program message. So this is program one, this would be program two, three, and so on. So if we open up the plugin, can see that these clips are switching kits for us. Super, super handy. I tend to use different scenes and live for different sections of a song, and I might want to use a different kit and sensory percussion for a different section of a song. So I can just rearrange these dummy clips. Maybe I only use three kits in a song, so I don't need any of these. Again, get rid of what you don't need to keep things simple. So maybe the first two scenes use kit one, and then the next two scenes use kit two, and then we go back to kit one, and then we go to kit three for a bridge. Something like that. The purpose of this off clip here is to turn off the plugin and the track activator. I like to use that when I have a live set going with multiple songs set up to play back to back, and each one has its own separate setup. Using these off clips, I can deactivate everything that I'm not playing, and that is a huge CPU saver. Using this kind of configuration, I usually end up with uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 tracks per song. And if I'm playing a live set of five songs, that's a lot of tracks. And then just all of them being active and ready to go is going to be a huge CPU drain. This is a measure to be more CPU conscious. 
we've mentioned this briefly before, but these are audio tracks to stem out each individual drum and send coming out of sensory percussion. Let's just get a kick, first kick I can find. There it is. That audio is coming out of the drum one out channel only. That's really nice for recording. It's like recording a drum set with multiple microphones. You have stems, makes it a lot easier to mix. An important note here is that these tracks, the monitoring is set to off because I'm already monitoring from the plugin. If I set this to auto, we're actually hearing two. It just doubles up and gets louder. If the CPU is more taxed, then we'll start hearing some flaming or phasing uh, if we're monitoring from both. So I usually just leave these off. My personal workflow is to mainly use these tracks for recording. Another reason to use these separate audio tracks would be if you wanted to use some kind of plugin or audio effect on a specific drum within live after the plugin. You might want to do the opposite and monitor out of these tracks and then not monitor out of the plugin. Aside from easy recording, the other huge benefit to using the sensory percussion plugin is easy MIDI integration and communication between sensory percussion and live. I have two different approaches for how to use MIDI. The first would be this MIDI drum rack, and the purpose of this is literally just to play, if you wanted to play a drum rack within live, there it is, and this would correspond to this sensory percussion kit called MIDI to drum rack. And what's going on here is that the MIDI output I have set up for all the drums kind of makes sense for how I would set up a drum rack. So on my kick, I would just have C being a bass drum. On the snare, I'm using mainly D and C sharp, which would be here and here for snares. Basically, the whole kit is spread out with MIDI notes that make sense to me for a drum rack and occupy this grid right here only. This whole business over here, the purpose of it is to make it easy to create modulations or con map controllers from sensory percussion to stuff in live. So let's just get a sound. Nah. Cool. So I got this vocal sample nah, nah. as an illogical kick choice, but whatever. This is expression control. It's my go-to device for creating mappings of controllers to parameters in live. I just made a tutorial about expression control. You can check that out, so I won't go into detail about how this works. The point I want to make right now, as far as the template is concerned, is that it's here, ready to go, ready to make some mappings to different stuff. So let's just grab velocity and apply it to the pitch. <laughs> Now I can control the pitch of that. I also put this LFO MIDI device here because I just think it's really nice to have an LFO handy. And we could do the same thing, mapping it to this controller. So I just set this up to be more of a sustained wavetable kind of thing, triggering it with the kick, introducing the LFO to the pitch. Now we have some vibrato going. One really powerful kind of synthesis modulation technique is to use one modulation source to control the amount of another modulation source. And having expression control right next to an LFO is makes that super easy. So I can map velocity to this depth control, maybe rein in the range. So if I play soft, we don't have a lot. But if I play hard, we have a lot of, we introduce more of it. So anyway, that's what's going on there. I'm a modulation junkie. If you don't care about trying to do that kind of thing, you might just want to get rid of this, get rid of the, the visual noise. Now you just have a clean drum rack to work with. The reason I put this whole thing in a group is going back to that idea of turning everything on and off to save CPU. This on clip will turn on the group and thus all of the devices down the chain and this off clip will turn everything off as well as the track activator. If you're planning on pl incorporating this setup into a live performance with alongside other songs, I would recommend anything you do with clips, use this on clip as a template because then you'll have that automation to turn everything on baked in. 
when you're playing another song, you can just throw this off clip anywhere where the track needs to be off. I don't think I mentioned that the MIDI routing is critical to get this MIDI to talk. The MIDI input needs to be whatever the track that has the plugin is called. And then in the second chooser, you have to select sensory percussion plugin. Notice that on the plugin track, I have the MIDI input set to no input. This is a personal preference of mine to reduce options because some option left open is often the source of trouble down the line. So the default when you set up a MIDI track is all inputs. So if I had some sort of something set up in sensory percussion to respond to MIDI input and I had that mapped to something, I might have, if I had several MIDI controllers set up, it's totally possible that I might be making changes that I don't intend to make from some controller that I didn't realize was controlling sensory percussion. So you can still utilize MIDI input into the plugin. Whenever I do that, I'm usually doing it within a clip. We could just demonstrate that really quickly. This is CC2. Just do some kind of shape. Get that rolling. Go into the plugin. External input, learn it. There it is. That sine wave shape I made is now here. And then I could map that to whatever. Okay, so we talked about the drum rack configuration. That's one common way of utilizing MIDI output from sensory percussion. If you want to have a drum rack all in one place, that's totally cool. The other option is to have MIDI output from each drum on an individual track. And this is a little, this is probably the most complicated part of the template, but I think I can explain it fairly well. Live does not allow plugins to output multi channel MIDI. So, all of this noise that you might have been flexing if you were using MIDI output from the sensory percussion standalone doesn't work within the plugin. But that's totally fine. I was disappointed about that at first, but honestly, two years later, it doesn't even really matter to me. My workaround is to output MIDI from each drum on a separate octave. So drum one would be notes in the, C the C1 octave. Drum two would be the, the two octave. Drum three would be the three octave. And drum four would be the four octave. And so all of that's just gonna be output on one MIDI channel, but we can still parse it by utilizing a group, restricting the notes that are allowed to pass through to the octave that we have in mind. So this is the kick with that C1 to B1 range. So if I play something on my snare, it's not going to pass through because it's not within this box right here. Whereas the snare track, it will go through because that is in the C2 octave. Drum three is in the three octave and the drum four is in the four octave there. Separating MIDI from each drum to a different track is mainly useful if you're wanting to play a melodic instrument. We'll just throw a default wavetable in there. So the MIDI notes that I had set up will pass through in that octave and play this synth. There are several ways to get melodic with sensory percussion playing a synthesizer or melodic sampler. The most straightforward would be to just use the MIDI notes of the melody that you want to play. Another way is to utilize a MIDI pitch effect and automate the changes or control it with a controller. Uh, but my go-to method is to use MIDI sample and hold. And that would allow me to create a clip of the notes I want to play, sequence it out, but then it's just an open-ended container for me to play into. This is another big topic that has its own tutorial, which you can watch. I'll put a link in the video. I have a separate group with MIDI sample and hold source tracks. So this would output on channel one, and this would output on channel two and three. So we could, let's see, the snare is receiving on channel two as in the template. So here I could draw in some stuff, but I could roll this clip, go back over here. I can play that sequence in a very flexible way. So that's my go-to workflow, which is why I've put all of that in the template. If you're not interested in that, delete it, but it's there if you want to use it. So that's what the sample and hold pitch input business is. Each track has one of those with a slightly different flavor or a different 
different way of handling polyphony. And then after that, we have all the handy modulation stuff, expression control, uh, LFO MIDI, and I threw envelope MIDI in there, which is which is nice if you want to use it. The sky's the limit. So that's a whirlwind tour of how the tracks are set up. Again, that's a lot of options. Just get rid of the stuff that you don't plan on using. That'll only take a few seconds, and then it should be a pretty efficient launching point for whatever you want to do. To automate changing scenes, when I put together a song to play with sensory percussion, I like to set up each section of the song in a different scene and then automate the changes. So maybe the A section, which would be eight bars, and I would create a dummy clip through a virtual MIDI bus to control this select the next scene and launch it thing. That was fine, but it was a bit of a headache. And now we don't have to do that because scenes have follow actions. So to get a follow action, you would just select a scene, enable follow actions, and the default selection is 100% of the time it will the action will be next scene so then all you would have to do is put in however long you want it to be let's make it three bars just to keep it quick and now if we launch the scene I'm not gonna do anything but three bars in it will launch the next scene here we go yes fantastic so between scene follow actions and utilizing expression control to get CCs out of sensory percussion, there's no need for a virtual MIDI bus, which is just really nice and a lot more sustainable. You can get this template on my Patreon. Even if you decide not to get this template, I hope this was helpful for you to understand what you need to do and possibly make your own. Thanks for watching. See you next time.